ready for one last ride? Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is once again written and directed by James Gunn and his final Marvel movie, at least for now, uh, before he goes and heads off the DC Universe at Warner Brothers. So the kind of potentially final Guardians of the Galaxy movie, without any spoilers, uh, focuses on the team uh, trying to find a way to save one of their teammates who is gravely wounded in an attack. And this kind of brings them into conflict with the High Evolutionary, who is a uh, brilliant but kind of cruel madman who seems to want to create uh, the perfect species. And ultimately, this is the kind of the main conflict of the uh, of the group. Along the way, we could have learned a little bit more about uh, one of the kind of the members. Uh, backstory who may have links to the kind of the high evolutionary uh, we also have a team pursued by um, Adam Warlock who was a holdover from one of the kind of the post credit scenes from the second movie a, um, a hyped up kind of super version of the sovereign the kind of the gold people from volume two now what will happen you'll have to watch the movie and find out so let's discuss what I think works with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. It's fair to say that myself and probably a lot of people have been somewhat disenfranchised by Marvel movies of late. The only one that I've really enjoyed was um, Spider-Man No Way Home. But I'm pleased to say that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is a return to form uh, for the, kind of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the original Guardians of the Galaxy is probably up there with uh, one of my favourite top five kind of Marvel movies. And this one, I'm not quite sure if I like it better, but it's it's up there. Um, this one feels much more of an ensemble movie than the previous two, which did focus on Star-Lord a lot of the time. And it, kind of, it felt like Star-Lord and his kind of backup singers here it's much more of a kind of a group effort, I would say, really, with, with, with Star Wars still having a pivotal role, but not quite as upfront uh, as he is in the previous kind of two movies. Uh, this movie also is certainly one of the more adult uh, kind of Marvel entries. Now, it might be surprising considering the tone of the original two uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movies, which really the first Guardians of the Galaxy were, was the film probably responsible for the comedic uptake within the, kind of the MCU, which has kind of been taken uh, to the kind of the nth degree at this point. But it's interesting that it's Guardians of the Galaxy that is now the one seeming to kind of ground the movies or, or the MCU to some degree, at least with uh, in in this instance with a story with uh, real pathos and. Um, seemingly kind of very high stakes which i thought was interesting there is still uh, you know jokes in there but it is you know the, the, the guardians of the galaxy have always been quite capable of you know having that humor be part of the characters without kind of being at the expense of the character if that makes sense and i think this is um they pull back slightly with the humor here there is still quite a lot of jokes in here and it still it, it still works it's maybe not as funny as the previous two but there still is a reasonable amount of jokes, and I do feel that they, the jokes kind of land for the most part. Some might find them a little bit kind of like um, in bad taste at times, but you know, I, I quite enjoyed it to be honest. I thought everyone here did a good job with some real standouts for me being Karen Gillan as a Nebula, who now is really kind of ingratiated in the kind of the team, and seemingly has much more of a kind of like an emotional connection. But everyone here, I, I think, does a good job of really kind of, um, you know, showing a, like a, a real emotional range within within this kind of movie, and within their kind of roles within the team. Uh, so I, I actually quite like that. Uh, and as I say, the movie it feels like it has uh, some real kind of like dark moments, and uh, and it's surprising where where it goes in certain aspects. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but. Um, there's even things, I mean, there's stuff that you haven't seen in the trailer. There's, there's uh, 
fate of sitting with millions of people, of, with characters that you're introduced to that are, you know, that head in a, in a very dark path. Although I do feel Marvel has somewhat maybe pulled back from the edge on certain things. Um, the story is intriguing and has some interesting kind of changes of location. There's one sequence which reminded me of like a surreal kind of like 60s style kind of prisoner-esque kind of um, space station and things. And there's some interesting kind of planets and, uh, and the kind of like species and things like this. Uh, yes, obviously, if you're familiar with the high evolutionary, there's some kind of interesting kind of like mutations on animals and stuff. It sometimes it reminds me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I have to say, uh, with some of the kind of the aesthetic choices with some of these kind of like these creature designs and things like this. Um, I think the uh, our, our kind of the high evolutionary is a bad guy is a little underdeveloped and I'll cover that in just a minute, but I still found, uh, you know, him an, uh, somewhat of an interesting villain um, in the fact that he feels like he's somewhat kind of flawed uh, in regards to his plans. It doesn't seem like he's like um, completely kind of got it all together, if that makes sense, which I like, kind of liked. Um, I feel Adam Warlock is, well, not pleased like a lot of people. I actually quite liked him. Uh, Will Poulter as Adam Warlock. He's very different from the comics, but I was not a huge fan of the character in the comics, to be honest. Um, you know, he was obviously uh, very uh, kind of integral in the comics with the, kind of the Infinity kind of saga and things like that. Less obviously so in the uh, uh, in the film version, but here he's, his character has, has changed quite a lot, and I kind of liked it. I actually kind of quite liked what they did with him. Um, but there's some great action sequences. I think the effects are, you know, are quite fun. I'm not sure he's got the rewatchability of maybe some of the other kind of Marvel films, and particularly the original Guardians of the Galaxy. But I do feel it's a good story that feels like it, um, you know, it, it progresses the uh, of the characters of the Guardians, and it kind of even pays pays off things that I was wondering from pr uh, the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, certainly in regards to Peter Quill's uh, links to the Earth, for example. Um, but yeah, you do feel like there is there, there is certainly forward momentum with the majority of the, of the Guardians of the Galaxy crew here. But what didn't work for me, as I, as I mentioned, I think that our, our bad guys' motivations were a little mixed to me. I mean, it's explained in the, you know, if you're familiar with the comics, obviously, you'll kind of, it is true to the comics to a degree but you know he wants to create this kind of perfect genetic race but in the movie I'm thinking well why does he want to do that what's in it for him he's just like he wants to do it for reasons and to me it, it wasn't there wasn't really enough motivation about why he wanted to do that yeah he, you know I get it, he wants to kind of create this perfect society but what does he get out of it I didn't really feel like there was that there and he's the guy's performance who you recognise from the Peacemaker show. Um, I don't know. It's a little bit kind of one note at times. He's a bit like a shouty kind of villain. Uh, there are some scenes where he's a bit more subtle, but for the most part, he ends up being kind of. He just seems like a, a little bit deranged and kind of. Um, I mean, maybe that's what you could put it down. So, yeah, he's a madman. Then why you got all these kind of people following him and things like that? Yeah, to me, I don't know. He wasn't particularly as fleshed out as maybe. I would have liked, which is, let's be honest, a problem with um, a lot of the kind of the Marvel movies. Now, one thing the Guardians of the Galaxy movies have always been quite famous for is their uh, infusion with music, like kind of retro music, and it's worked pretty well. But I have to say, with it, for me, with this one, the movie all, uh, almost stops at th uh, sometimes to introduce a music track. And I didn't feel it was worked in as kind of organically as the last two films. Um, and it's almost like, right, stop, we're going to have a, a musical interlude now to a certain degree. And I think they, they they just overplay their hand a little bit too much with these kind of like these, you know, these kind of uh, older musical tracks. That to me, once or twice kind of stops the movie in, 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 in it turned into a kind of a music video for a short time. So I, I kind of didn't necessarily kind of like that. I, I do think, I mean, as much as this movie kind of goes for in dark, and I don't think it's suitable for young children, actually, um, because there may be some distressing scenes, 
I suspect this movie may have been written to end in a different way and it has been changed. I'm not going to say why that is, but to me it, it, it kind of it pulls back from what could have been a, a real kind of like uh, um, movie with real pathos and they said it doesn't do that. Um, but it's still, they, they, they are still some very dark sequences in this film. Um, some, some Guardians, I feel, are a little bit short-changed. Groot, um, I really don't feel we see much of him in, in this movie. Uh, you know, he's, he's a bulkier Groot now and there's some fun things that they do with him. But he's kind of sidelined, uh, uh, I feel, or in the, in, at least in the kind of the background for a lot of the times. I never really feel like he was a pivotal player. And that's because I suppose you have a, you know, a large cast now. And it's very much like um, what I say with like the Star Wars films. Like, you know, Chewbacca never really has a, does anything pivotal because he's not a human faced character. So they want all the kind of the, you know, they want all of the, um, uh, the major things to happen with human characters. It's like that scene where, um, you know, Carrie Fisher hugs uh, Ray Palpatine instead of Chewie, even though that he, when hand dies and things like that. So it's just like, no, you know, because he's not played by a kind of human actor, I feel like he's sort of sidelined to a certain degree. And then we have like Kraglin and Cosmo, who I felt like were a little kind of there for um, just kind of like they were introduced. So, and obviously one of them is Sean Gunn's brother, so he's there doing something, but they don't really have a lot of impact. And then Adam Warlock, I have to say, I think he's only included here because he's a holdover from a post credit scene. It doesn't really feel like the movie needs him. It doesn't really feel like he adds a lot to the actual kind of story. Um, and it's, I think they could have made him more of an integral part of the story, making him like a, um, you know, with the Guardians, we have the High Evolutionary, and then we have um, the Sovereign with uh, Adam Warlock being a kind of a third force but it's, it never really amounts to a three-way um, kind of conflict in any, in any real way. So, you know, to me, I, I found this movie very enjoyable. It's certainly one of the best Marvel movies uh, within recent years. Um, you know, like I said, probably this and um, uh, No Way Home are the ones that I really do feel stand up within the, kind of the post kind of Endgame era. Uh, it's, like I said, and a lot of that is down to the, 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 the writing and the dramatic elements here, and the more the focus more of on the team um, than, than Peter Quill, for example. But I, you know, there's a couple of just more minor things, more niggles, if anything, to be to be brutally honest. But I, I, I enjoyed this one. It's somewhat of a return to form. We'll see if they drop the ball with the marbles. Um, uh, so yeah, for me, it's a seven out of ten. I was kind of toing and froing. To, a, to an eight, but now I've kind of heard myself talk. I, I will, uh, I'll give it a seven. But I'm not quite sure whether I like it more or, or or less than the original. Probably I still like the original Guardians Galaxy a little bit more, as I feel that has a little bit more rewatchability. But this is a strong one, certainly for me, better than the second one. So uh, yeah, seven out of ten for me. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to you next time. Bye for now.